From Deloitte Tax, welcome to the Tax News and Views podcast. In this podcast series, we talk to specialists from Deloitte about the latest business issues and developments. I'm Carrie Falkenhayn, your host for Tax News and Views. Today, we'll be talking about digital tax administration, or in other words, the increasing requirements from taxing bodies around the world to get more taxpayer data in digital format. And this is creating challenges for tax departments. Joining me today to discuss these trends are two colleagues from Deloitte's tax management consulting practice, Stephanie Lunin and RJ Littleton. Welcome both of you to the podcast. And I'll start out with you, RJ. Maybe you could talk about how the rapid shift towards digital tax administration is impacting tax departments. Hi, and good afternoon, and thank you. What a loaded question here. You know, as I as I look about, you know, think through digital tax administration and how this is impacting tax departments, there's a number of areas in which this is really coming to the forefront. And we've heard from many of our business leaders on a couple of these key topics. One in particular is that a lot of business leaders within the organizations are really focusing in on the prioritization of data management and simplification of lower cost delivery models, just as their foundation in terms of how they're starting to deal with this quick shift towards a digital environment. And what this means is that business leaders are really looking to drive value through either shared service center concepts, or maybe even looking at outsourcing certain parts of their business, but also taking a good look at business partnering internally and where can they get closer alignment to source systems to drive better tax sensitization, where can they deploy different types of automation to deliver better ROI while maintaining the workforce. But a couple other things that I think about is really in three buckets. One is we're seeing a drive towards integrated tax platforms. And what I mean by this is that you've got tax platforms that are very well connected to source systems, to subledgers, and all the way out into regulatory reporting environments. And so these tools are a one-stop shop where tax professionals can come in do their work, but also get to the granular level of detail that they need to support inquiries, whether it's you know audit inquiries over time or different reporting and analytics. The other thing I like to highlight here is that while it can be daunting thinking through how you can digitize your tax department, yeah, I always like to talk about think big and start small. These type of projects, you typically can't boil the ocean in one go round. Data management takes time. We typically see many of our clients will pick a focus point and they'll go deep and then they'll scale out. So really think about that as you start to put these practices in place. And then the last thing I'll mention here is just the tax and regulatory system connectivity I mentioned. There's a lot of focus on how can we drive better synergies and get data to the regulatory departments faster. And we're seeing this broadly from a global perspective that there's actually key tie-ins in terms of how fast these bodies are requesting data, whether it's real-time or monthly or weekly. And so we just have to stay ahead of, of the trend there. And so having a better handle on data management and simplification are going to be key as we move forward. Yeah, I, I could see where these new demands by revenue authorities are creating a number of challenges. So what strategies do you see as the most beneficial to compete in this type of environment? Yeah, I think for me, it gets back to data. I think that data is, is definitely going to rule the world for the tax department. And they're starting to realize how powerful the data can be when they have access to it. Think about analytics and reporting, scenario planning. If, if you think through like M&A activity, how can they make better business decisions with the data that they have? But this also dovetails nicely into looking at what I call your tax technology architecture and what are the tools that you have available to you today? Because oftentimes when I talk with clients, they don't even realize all the different capabilities that they may have internally. And so this gets back to a little bit of that business partnering concept that I that I brought up earlier and, and having tax a lot more closely aligned to accounting and finance and IT and other parts of the business. So that way, when opportunities do arise, they are positioned to be able to put themselves in a, in a better position going forward. RJ, maybe you can take us a little deeper on that and talk about what is driving companies around some of that transformation, whether it be finance or business model or IT transformation and how tax departments can ensure that they're positioned well to meet the changing needs of the business. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think one of the things that jumped out to me on some of the respondents in the survey were that 
tax leaders said their teams must have the resources and skills to give deeper advisory support on digital business models. 65% of our respondents chose that. Another 49% talked about supply chain restructuring and sustainability. So you can see big numbers there in terms of thinking forward around how they can continue to digitize. One thing that jumps out to me from a tax department perspective is that historically transformation initiatives, they may have started out with big finance modernization or big IT driven projects, and they were typically handled in what I would call a waterfall approach. Very long projects where you go through detailed requirements and design up front before you ever do any kind of build. I think what we're seeing shift with the the new technology that's out there, as well as the technology savvy folks that we have coming into tax departments and the rest of the organization is that we're moving more towards an agile based approach to transformation. And what that means is that one, you can fail fast, which is always good, figure out what works and what doesn't work. And you're going to be able to see some of the benefit of the automation work a lot faster when you work in more of an agile approach. I think this coupled with the fact that tax resources are also becoming more technology inept and becoming better business partnering internally and externally, that we're going to see a big push over the next coming years in terms of how these different technologists are going to emerge within the organization to really help focus on driving that change for businesses. Thank you. Thank you for that. Stephanie, maybe turning to you. So how do next generation ERP systems enable tax operations to meet regulatory obligations? Carrie, it's very simple. What we're seeing is that in the next-gen ERP systems, you've got increased functionality to enable tax to automate large parts of tax processes in the ERP. So whether you automate sales and use tax or global VAT or automate your schedule M's, by getting good tax data. The key is being able to identify what is the data and what is the needs and opportunities in that next-gen ERP that tax has, and then go work with your IT and your business teams to go translate the tax department needs into that next-gen ERP. Now, what we found is in our tax survey that those tax leaders and tax teams that actually engaged up front and very early and were a part of the implementation of the next-gen ERP, and they were able to accomplish those data sensitization and simplifying and getting the level of data they need, as well as adding automation into the next ERP. What that translated to as a benefit was 56% said that this meant that they were highly effective at supporting the business with being nimble and doing scenario modeling and getting insights into any new business lines or product changes or even jurisdictional changes. So the key was that they actually made themselves, as RJ even talked about, a business partner in that next-gen ERP transformation and got the benefit of the insight into that. Now, those who said they didn't engage, 35% of them said they had moderate to low use of the next-gen ERP. They actually couldn't be nimble and agile and meet the business changes and be able to model and forecast for the business. So our advice really is from a next-generation ERP is be ready. You know, recognize the opportunity and get engaged understand what requirements you have and start talking with and scoping out both resources that need to be part of that project, but also what should be embedded in that project for tax. And then ask for everything, get your wish list together, and then work with the teams to translate your needs and try to put everything you can in the ERP where it is a good fit. 
But anything else that falls outside of that list on your wish list is what we consider a gap. And so build a plan for those gaps and identify whether or not they need further solutioning in the ERP or if there are alternative ways to automation. So you mentioned the survey and RJ mentioned the survey, and that was all about better business partnering resulting from a tax data model. What about a tax data model is of the most value to your clients? So our clients basically said that there were a number of business benefits and outcomes around that data model. So key of those were advising the business on emerging regulatory and compliance issues, high survey results to getting more automation around the tax compliance and reporting process if you have a great data model. Reducing the operating cost was a factor as well as delivering reliable ETR costs. But I have to be honest with you, the future is such that we are seeing in the IT space or the finance transformation space or any kind of transformation within companies whereby you're going to have a number of technology suite of solutions. And you need a strategy around that data model. So you can get all the benefits of advising the business and automating your tax compliance and reducing automation costs, operating costs, et cetera. But also that you have the ability to look at things holistically. And when you do that, you can pull different levers of saying, okay, this is the most important thing that I'm going to get in this technology or business model transformation. And this is the data that I need. And you actually can articulate and define what that looks like. The data model actually will create greater insight and help you along that transformation because you know and can translate what you're asking for and you have a vision and plan around that. Technologies are always going to change, right? And they're also going to become more integrated. And so as you align your data and your process management, tax departments will be able to use any tool necessary to evolve and stay ahead of reporting and compliance requirements. So maybe I'd ask and open it up to RJ to even see what he thinks about what is the benefit of data models that he's seeing in his daily working with our teams and our clients. RJ, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah. And I mean, I think you hit a number of the key areas. And one important thing I think for companies and clients to remember is, you know, try and grab the data at the most granular level. This concept of a, of a tax data model or tax data hub, the big benefit here is that it's hub and spoke. So you've got this centralized place that you're feeding data to all of your different functions and you're not continuously going back to the well to rederive that data. So if you think about it from that standpoint, you bring things in at a low level And then you use business rules and different tax validations to roll that data up or drive additional automation. I think that's where we're seeing a lot of the value. The other thing that I'm seeing coming out of a lot of these big data projects is this concept of a global taxonomy. And so how can you get, call it like the the list of all the global data fields that you need for tax to find? And that I mentioned before, that stuff takes time. And so typically you want to start in an area and then scale out to others. But the important thing is to figure out what is the platform of choice as you move forward and then put a game plan in place and and attack it. So it gets back to that think big and start small and find some place to really get things moving. Got it. Thank you. And so maybe as a last question, maybe you can talk about how you position tax to add value, especially around these digital transformation projects. Yeah. So the key is, Carrie, is that value from the tax department and positioning tax 
in, in these different projects, the earlier you can get tax engaged, the better in the strategic decision making. And let me tell you why. Tax would be engaged in any other business type of transaction to do tax planning, tax savings, identification of R&D credits or intellectual property planning, that type of thing. It's no different on digital transformation projects. Tax can identify savings around these major projects early on that can help fund and offset the cost of the project. So just like any traditional tax planning, you have the same type of opportunities around digital transformation. It's just making sure that tax gets in up front. And so that's a key component. The other part of this is being able to have tax truly define its role in the business. Most of the tax leaders we interview reported that major technology projects were underway in their organizations, some that encompass the whole entire finance function or other business processes that are important to them, and others were maybe more targeted. But if we have tax up front and engaging, we can actually help design up front both the tax opportunities, as I talked about in planning, but also enabling tax components to achieve tax benefits that should be outcomes of these digital transformations. So I'll leave you with this three key takeaways to just keep in mind as you're listening for, are we doing any type of digital transformation projects in our business? Be vocal. Tax should and is now considered a driver on many of these transformation projects and should be part of the overall business case. Engage early on. Don't sit back and wait for the change to come to you. Make the change happen for yourself. We talked about this earlier. Identify the tax leads. Align the tax resources to support these initiatives. Partner with the business and create awareness for tax and establish them to be part of the project sponsorship. And then finally, get help. These projects are so complex. Don't be fooled thinking that you can do it alone. This is not a going and updating your chart of accounts project. One of the biggest costs of these types of projects is coming in after the fact and trying to make the changes. So not to pile on again, but getting the right opportunity up front is the real critical path for tax so that they can be in the best position and get the greatest outcomes of that digital transformation. Well, thank you, Stephanie and RJ. I really appreciate your insights, especially around how tax departments can benefit from transformation projects, but more importantly, how they can add value to those projects. And it's becoming more of an expectation, not only of companies, tax departments, business partners, but also the regulatory authorities. Uh, so all the more reason to get at it. If our listeners would like to connect with RJ or Stephanie, you can certainly find them on LinkedIn, or you can learn more about Deloitte's tax management consulting practice on Deloitte.com. You can find the survey that was referenced earlier there. We also have a number of debrief webcasts that touch on tax management consulting issues, some of which are previously recorded that you can download, or there's future series that you can sign up for. In the meantime, we hope you explore our collection of tax news and views podcasts and are able to join us on an upcoming episode. Thank you all for joining. Be well. Be well.